Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Dave's Match Channel. I'm your host, David Tear, and uh, this is my next video and continuing feature I'm running on the Math Lovers book, a three volume series I wrote um, from 2019 to 2022 that's available on Amazon.com in case you guys are interested. These are what each of the books looks like, and uh, they're uh, the first two volumes are textbooks. The first one's more recreational. The second one's more academic. Third one's problems and solutions. You guys might want to check it out. But, uh, you know, it's pretty cheap. But, but in case you don't want to buy it, you can just watch this series I'm running on YouTube where I'm going through the book. Uh, and I'm up to Chapter 2. I'm up to Section 2.6. I'm starting a new section today on uh, um, the Pythagorean Theorem and Fermat's Last Theorem. And today I'm going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem, which I think you guys probably learned when you were in grade school. I'm not sure if you learned a proof, but I'm going to show you a very simple proof. So anyway, let's begin. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, let's just say what the Pythagorean Theorem says. Um, just to refresh you guys' memory, I'm sure you guys all learned this at some point. But assume you have a right triangle, that's just a triangle with one right angle, as shown on the bottom of this figure. Um, the right angle is the angle made by the sides labeled A and B. That's, uh, that's the angle in the lower uh, right corner. That's a 90-degree angle. So that's what's called a right triangle, just a, a triangle with a single 90-degree angle. And, uh, uh, and if, if you have a triangle like this, you label the sides A, B, and C. These are the lengths of the three sides. And A or B are what called the legs. Those are the uh, sides that are adjacent to the right angle. To form the right angle, if you like, and C is what's called the hypotenuse. That's the the uh, longest side, the side uh, that's uh, not connected to the right angle, uh, opposite the right angle, if you like. And if you have a right triangle like this, uh, what the Pythagorean theorem says is that you have this uh, equation that holds for A, B, and C, namely A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Pretty amazing equation, I think. And this is considered, I think the Pythagorean theorem is widely considered uh, the greatest mathematical result of all time, or at least the greatest theorem of all time. And it's not hard to see why it's uh, so important. I mean, we work with right angles all the time. I mean, you know, this was this was actually, even though this theorem is attributed to Pythagoras, who was a, a great mathematician who lived around the 5th century B.C., um, I think it's widely believed now that he was not the first person to prove this theorem. I think it's even debated whether he proved it at all. But, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it was known whether it was proven or not. I think this relationship was known at least at least a thousand years earlier by the Babylonians. The Babylonians were very interested in Pythagorean triples, i.e. triples of integers A, B, and C, where A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I'm pretty sure the reason they were interested in because they probably knew that they formed right triangles. I mean, right triangles are very important to work with. And if you think about, you know, ancient societies, they wanted to build buildings and, you know, they wanted to get right angles. And a good way to get a right angle was to make a triangle that obeyed uh, the Pythagorean theorem. If, if its sides had lengths A and B and C and A squared plus B squared equals C squared, that meant necessarily that A, B, C was a right triangle with a right angle formed uh, you know, by the legs of like the A and B. So that's why it's useful, uh, kind of became the basis for a lot of uh, architecture in ancient times. And, uh, you know, it has other uses as well. I mean, it has uses in a lot of theory, a lot of mathematical theory as well. I can't even go over all the uses of the Pythagorean theorem. Just suffice it to say, it's a very, very important result, which is why this is widely considered uh, the most important result in mathematics. It's also, the, it has the most proofs, I think, of any theorem in math. I think there's something like 2,500 known proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. I'm just going to present one of them. But uh, before I do that, I just want to say one more thing about this picture on the bottom. I didn't talk about the squares. You, you'll see, you'll notice that there are little squares that are drawn uh, um, connected to each of the uh, sides of the triangle. There's a square uh, side length A connecting the side length, uh, the leg of length A, another one side length B, connecting the leg of length B, finally uh, a kind of a um, tilted uh, square connecting the uh, side of length C, uh, square whose side lengths are C. And what it really says is the sum of the squares of the A and B is equal to the sum of the square of C. What that means is that if you add these areas, 
the area, the sum of the area of this uh, square um, can attach the leg, the leg of length A and the one of leg of length B is equal to the area of the square uh, whose side length is C. And now I'm going to show a very simple proof of this. This is a proof without words. I think there's several proofs without words of the Pythagorean theorem. I don't think Pythagoras discovered this particular proof. I may be wrong. I said that he did. He discovered a more complicated proof, which I don't like really. But this was an early proof. I don't know who proved this originally. But here's the proof. Proof without words. Consider these two uh, figures. First consider the figure on the left. We have a, a, a square. Uh, we have two squares in this diagram, actually. We have a, uh, an external square, kind of the frame of this picture. And the side lengths of this square are A plus B because uh, we have, uh, um, you know, we have uh, four. We, I made four copies of a right triangle with legs of length A and length B. And you can see they, go, they rotate around this figure in a nice way. It has fourfold symmetry. So we've got these four right triangles, each with legs of length A and B and hypotenuse of length C. And uh, the, the, the whole frame, the square corresponding the whole frame, of course, has an area of A plus B quantity squared. Or if you, uh, if you factor that out, you get A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. But then it also has this inner square, this tilted inner square, whose uh, area is C squared because its side lengths are C. So uh, uh, here's how the proof goes. I mean, you, you don't have to do this rearrangement. I'm kind of jumping the gun here, but you can do this algebraically. Uh, if, let's add up the areas of the four right triangles. Well, each right triangle has lengths of length A and B, and I think you guys learned a long time ago that the area of a, of a triangle is its base times its height. Well, in that case, the base, if you look at the one on the lower left, the base is length A, the height is length B, so its area is one half AB. And we have four of them, so that's 2AB. So we have uh, A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. That's the total area of the frame, if you like, the big square. And then the 2AB is just the uh, area of the four right triangles. So what we are left with is A squared plus B squared. Well, guess what? It's also equal to C squared. That's the proof. So we didn't have to go to the rearrangement. If you don't like the algebra, you can just rearrange these triangles. This is a little more visual. So another way to prove this, we look at the picture on the left. Um, nothing to explain there. You got these four right triangles, and you got a uh, you know the square in the middle, area C squared. Now let's rearrange the right triangles. Let's just move the green one, uh, which is in the lower right corner, up to the upper left. But let's keep the the upper left one where it is, and now let's move the the light green one to the lower right, and the and the uh, the dark blue one to the to the uh, lower left, or no, the lower right. And now we've just rearranged the right triangles. That's all we've done. We haven't changed their areas. And before the the white area was c squared, but now look at it. It's a squared plus b squared. So that's another way to prove that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pretty nice, I think. You could even make a, an actual model of this, you know. So those, that's a very simple proof without words the, of the Pythagorean theorem. I think that's a very nice proof. I think it's my favorite proof. And I'm just going to say a few more things before I get off of this. Like I said, there's about 2,500 known proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, Einstein proved it when he was 12 years old. I don't know how many guys realize this. Uh, Einstein actually came up with a very clever proof. And he wasn't even really a mathematician. But his proof was like... He, uh, well, I don't want to show it here. Maybe I'll show it in another video. But he used similarity of, uh, of triangles. He could break up a, a right triangle uh, with the legs of length A, B, and B, and uh, hypotenuse length C. You could break that up into two congruent small right triangles. And uh, you can use an uh, argument by similarity and show that A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Maybe I'll do that next time. It's not in my book. And I guess I just want to say one more thing. There was also a vice president. He later became president. I think it was Ulysses S. Grant, if I'm not mistaken. He actually proved, he came up with his own proof of, uh, of uh, the Pythagorean theorem. I think his proof was very similar to this one, actually. It's like he used kind of half of this picture to prove it. Uh, but I thought I'd mention that, too. So um, pretty beautiful theorem. There's a lot of videos on Proofs of you know, various proofs of Fermat's, I mean, not of, of the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, I think it's a really beautiful result, really important result, also very simple to prove. Um, 
So anyway, that concludes my video for today on, on the Pythagorean theorem. So thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.